Hello, listeners and foil fanatics. It's Brandon from Tinfoil Tales. I want to take a moment of your time before the episode starts to let you know about the new live stream show I have coming out called Tinfoil Tales After Dark. Tinfoil Tales After Dark will be live stream exclusively on YouTube on the last Thursday of every month at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It will be similar to the normal episodes as there will be a guest on there to share their experiences, but that's not all. You can also be a part of the conversation in the live chat. You can ask questions, talk with other listeners, and even hop on the screen and share your experiences with all of us live. It's going to be a fun and engaging monthly episode that I hope everyone enjoys. Make sure to head over to the Tinfoil Tells YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you never miss an episode. Mark your calendars for Thursday, February 29th and every last Thursday of each month to take part in Tinfoil Tells After Dark discussions. Now let's get back to the normal episode. And I just turned around and I pulled ass out of there. I was, I was done. I wasn't dealing with that. The hypocrisy of the cult is one of the things that turned me away the quickest. When I turned my headlights on, it turned and looked at us. And one of the things I remember the most were the eyes were glowing red. I see an orb of light. It is just circling these steps like it is waiting for me. And he begins to tell them uh, that he saw a UFO. They're basically like, what are you talking about? That's seven foot up on a tree, peeking around it. And that's where I saw the top of the muzzle nose and the eyes. As soon as I made eye contact with this thing, it felt like death. Welcome back to Tinfoil Tales. I'm your host, Brandon Wright. Today's episode, we're going to be joined by my guest, Josh. Josh has had some experiences and some run-ins with a creature that he's seen for most of his life when he lived down the southern part of the country. He reached out to me a while back and had some interesting things to talk about. So I said, definitely have him come on the show and share some of that with us today. Before we bring Josh on, though, if you've ever had an experience or story you'd like to share, you can come on Tinfoil Tells, discuss that with me. All you got to do is send an email to tinfoiltellspodcast at gmail.com, and we'll get you scheduled for a future episode. I'm always looking for new guests, so if you've got anything to talk about or if you know someone that does, please send them my way. If you want to help the podcast, you can leave a five-star review. That helps with the rankings, makes it more discoverable for anyone out there listening. New listeners find the podcast. That means possibly new guests, so more episodes too. If you leave a written review, I'll make sure to read that on an upcoming episode. If you want to help the podcast financially, you can always join the Patreon. Or if you'd rather just do something more simpler and just donate, there is a button in the show notes that you can do that with as well. Be sure to follow us on all the social medias, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I don't really use Twitter that often, but it is synced up to the podcast website, which is tinfoiltells.com. You can go on there as well as a way of contacting. So if you'd rather do that, you can send a message through the website as well. Whatever you got to do, though, it's definitely appreciated and want to hear from you guys. I think we're going to go ahead now and bring Josh on. Looking forward to talking with him. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I'd like to take this time to welcome my guest today, Josh. Thanks for coming on here and talking to me. Hello, how are you guys doing today? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. A little bit about yourself? Um, so my name is Josh. Um, originally uh, born in the South, migrated up here uh, right after Katrina. Um, my family kind of migrated pretty much all over the United States. Um Pretty much uh, as, at an early age, um, I knew there's something wasn't right about myself. Um, there, There's definitely something that was a little peculiar about me. Um, at the age of, like, I would say it was five or six, I, I learned that, I mean, hindsight now, I didn't know what it was then, but I learned that I could actually project myself out of my body and I learned how to do it kind of like on a crash course type of way um 
I was able to leave my body, go downstairs and, you know, see my parents or see my sister while, you know, taking naps and stuff like that. Because, you know, like all children, we were forced to take naps and just to give my our parents, you know, a little bit of time to breathe. But no, and I would go down and I would see them. And um, once I was awake, I'd go down and I'd tell them, like, this is what you were doing, you know, or this is who you were talking to. And I would freak them out like all the time. So I knew something just wasn't right about me. So as I got older, I kind of delve into um, very deeply, very quickly, actually, into voodoo. Um, I started learning um, gray magic. I guess you'd say it's a little bit of black, a little bit of white, a little bit of everything. Um, and I that's when things kind of spiraled right after that. By spiral, do you mean like um, out so, of control? <laughs> yeah, so stuff started happening um, like really like quickly. Um, so there was... And in, there was like a, I had the first time that I've ever seen a spirit was actually the hat man. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm aware of the hat man. I have an episode about it too. Yeah, it's, I, I don't like you at all. Um, he, I was down like downstairs in my basement. I was lying down. I was kind of watching TV, um, turned off the TV, kind of was relaxing um, and I saw him from the corner of my eye, but I thought it was like, you know, like just nothing. And then I saw these like shadows with him. And that's when I was like freaking out and like I opened my eyes and I remember that they were holding my arms and my legs down and I was trying to break free. And keep in mind, I don't have sleep paralysis. I don't have any of that type of stuff. Um... And it, it, they, he actually choked me. And when I was trying to fight back, like lift my body up, I can, I actually heard him laugh, like laugh at me, like, you know, ha ha ha, you know, you, you can't do anything about this. And then it stopped. And then I saw him just kind of turned the corner um, of my downstairs basement and he was gone. And like, I can, I could immediately sit up and I was freaked out. Like I ran up from the basement um, cause we had like a little man cave in the basement and I, I ran upstairs and like, I was telling everybody and they were like, no, we didn't see anything. And it was, it was just a mess. So that was the kind of that type of stuff started happening a happening a lot um, frequently. Like spirits, I would see those, and then eventually, um, the creature. Um, I don't know what to call it. Um, some people would call it. The uh, a not behind. Some people will call it a rake. I don't really know how to describe it. Um, it was there when I was younger. I just never paid attention to it. It was always out in the corner of my eye. Like I would be out. It was always outside. It wasn't like a thing where it was inside or it was like a spirit or anything like that. I would always catch it on the outside, and then when I would look, it would disappear. That's why I say it's like the not behind or the or the high behind or whatever the hate where like if you try to see it it it'll hide behind something and you won't be able to see it. So I would try and try and try um, to see this thing, and I would even get my friends like you know to help me like you know catch it or whatever, and we could never like. Fully and my and keep in my keep in uh mind my friends have actually seen it as well. My partner has seen it and to this day doesn't like talking about it. Um, he has seen it pop its head out from 
behind a tree or like um because we have trees in our backyard that kind of leads into like a, a small little you know like nook of it's i wouldn't really say it's like a I don't know. It's not really a forest. It's not really like, it's just like a small orchard, I guess you would say. And a little bit of woods. Yeah, just a little bit. Nothing like crazy. Yeah. Um, I know what you mean. And it, we, you know, we'd go there, you know, we drink, have bonfire and stuff every once in a while. And that's where it would be the most. And like when I was younger, I would never really pay attention to any of the stuff. And what was strange to me was my grandmother would always say, stay out of the woods, stay out of the woods. And I always thought it was one of those things where it was like, you know, stay out the woods because of a bear or, you know, whatever. And and trust me, I am so scared of everything. Um, when I moved up and we settled in West Virginia, my uncle, um, he has farmland it actually came with us how I don't know it was there. Um, I don't know if this is something that is just haunting my family. If it's haunting me, I don't know. Um, but I would have to get up at like five o'clock in the morning and I'd have to walk to school and well, I have to walk to the bus stop and I have to go through like this little valley to get to my uncle's house that has the bus stop and um it was like a half a mile but I, you'd have to walk through like the valley where like his horses and his cows and like all that shit well oh, i'm sorry all that stuff was i didn't mean to no you're fine um but you know and like i was <laughs> i'm i'm such uh, i'm i'm such a scaredy cat like i i would run from like you know, the cows and stuff, because, like, if you got close to them, you know, they did that huge, like, and it would scare the hell out of me, and, you know, we didn't have cell phones back then, so it was, like, a flashlight, and that's all you got, you know? But, yeah, no, it's, it's, I can't explain why it's with us, or it's with me, or, you know, I, I've thought that maybe um, possibly because, you know, I, I learned how to do all these things at an early age and maybe, you know, I, you know, dabbled into something that I shouldn't have. But I don't know. Um, it hasn't tried to hurt anybody that I'm aware of. Um Yet, uh, it has gotten closer to the house. I can say that over the years, it, it has migrated closer. But um, my father actually, um, when we were in West Virginia, he actually got us up in the middle of the night. My father knew about it. Um, he got us up in the middle of the night with the clothes that we were wearing. Um, and he said that you know he saw it again, and it was closer to our patio and he keeps getting you know bad vibes from it like my the older generation know about the hanks and you know all that good stuff and like my my father is creole so he don't mess around with any of that bad juju stuff and he got us up got everybody the clothes that we were wearing and we left, we came to the city, he got us an apartment, and he told my uncle to pack our things, and he paid our uncle to do it, and packed up all of our things, and we came up every weekend during the day to get our stuff, and to bring it down to Baltimore, and from down here, I've seen it once, and that's it. Um, I guess because there's not that many trees and there's not a whole lot of, you know, forestry unless you, you have to seek it out, like to go to like a state park or, 
you know, something like that. And I would never go to those things anyway after hearing about like all those missing people. And state parks are definitely got some weird stuff going on, that's for sure. Yeah, that that would be my luck that I would go to a state park and then I would get like snatched up by Bigfoot. I that's another thing that I don't trust as far as I could throw is a Sasquatch. Those I hear about people's accounts and it's just frightening. Like some of them are carnivores and some of them aren't. It would be my luck that I I, I got a carnivore. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when it comes to cryptids and everything else like that, I I really don't have an opinion one way or the other just because everyone has their own experiences. And right. I can't say that a Sasquatch is not going to hurt someone. I can't say it, it is going to hurt. I don't know. I've never seen one. And they're just like, I make this analogy from time to time, but if there are animals out there, all these creatures... Some might hurt you, some might not hurt you, because it's just like humans. Like some people will hurt you, some people won't hurt you. Absolutely. I mean, you just never know. Yeah, you really don't. I um, I, I what turned me into that was um, I was flipping through um, the Discovery Zone and I saw David Plaitis's, um Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, it, that special when I watched that I was like oh man nope 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 <laughs> I'm glad I didn't live there yeah they had a lot of weird stuff going on at that place and then I know David Pilates he does that I've seen 411 where there's a lot of missing people in the state parks and everything else yes 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 I've yet to get any of his books but um I heard it's uh the numbers are pretty crazy it I depends on who you talk to I know there's some naysayers out there that uh, act like the state parks it's not just state parks it's literally all over the place but because he talks about state parks it just makes it seem like it's the state parks but I haven't looked too much into that claim right. or not so right. I don't I don't know if it's everywhere if it's just state parks I mean it sounds like there's a lot of weird things that go on at the state parks and then you kind of wonder why if it is so many people missing, why is it that you don't really hear it mainstream talked about as much as like trying to keep it secret? Right. And I don't, well, I think me personally, like just my personal opinion, I think the reason why um, it happens in state parks is because it's such a mass amount of wilderness and people have made pathways like through the entire thing so it isn't like one of those things where you know you can stay if you stayed on course you can go through the entire park you know there has been people that you know got lost or whatever but it's one of those things that is it goes so deep and you know with like the the people who have vanished it's like it seems like you know, it's a blink of an eye. You know, they they turn around to sit something on a counter, and next thing you know, their their kids missing. You know, I just think it's it's definitely the woods. There's something about the woods that these things are attracted to. Maybe it's the trees because you know trees are so old. Maybe it's you know that, or I really don't know. I, I just know that. The thing that is, you know, pretty much stalked our home and, and you know, pretty, I, pretty much everybody in it, we have not let that thing come close enough to touch us. It's always been in arm's reach. I mean, if you could see this thing peer out from the side of a tree the first time I did, I almost messed myself and I, I don't wish it really on anybody. I don't wish, you know, just, it's, it's just insanity. Like I, I don't know and I don't know where it is. And I feel sorry for the people that, you know, it could be, you know, harassing now 
Could you but give I, a description of what it looked like? Sure. It's um well, it's like a grayish white. Um that's why I considered it like almost like a rake. It doesn't look exactly like a rake, but it has very similar attributes to it. It doesn't look like an, an alien, like a gray alien. It's very, very slim. It has I would say like a almost like an almond shaped face. Um, but you know, it's not like pointed at both ends. It's just very like almond, it's gone. Um, very it almost looks like it hasn't eaten a long time. You could definitely see its ribs like in between the bones. Um I did get a good look at that when it um it it poked its head out. Um, it has very, very little hair. The hair that you do see it is very like <clears throat> almost like wispy, very, very wispy. It would be like taking Homer Simpson's head and adding just a few more strands to it. And that would be like basically, you know, the amount of hair that it has. It's very, very little and it's very, very wispy. Um, its eyes are huge. I mean, just hauntingly huge. Um, and its nose is very, very, it's small. It's, it's very sunken in, almost like it's not existent, but it's there. It's just, it's small. Um, and its mouth is just, it's so big. And it has so much teeth and that's what creeps us all out is its teeth is so big the teeth aren't big it's just the smile when it does a smile every once in a while and that's what kills us all well not really literally but it that's that's pretty much you know the um the sign to you need to get in the house or whatever. Um, there's been a couple times where I've been out by the reservoir with me and my cousin and you can hear it. Like it's, it's not at all like stealthy. You could hear it and it, it would just, you could hear it like walk up to a tree, pop its head around it. And Normally, we're, we we catch the sound because, you know, it's like we think it's a deer. We have to be on guard because it could be a mountain lion or something. And my cousin, um, she caught it once and she was like, there's that thing, there's that thing. And I'm like, wait, what? what? And I, I turn around and I would see it just briefly enough to where I saw it had like this shit eating grin on his face and I was just like no nope it's time to go because I don't know what that smile means I don't know if that smile means I'm going to eat you or I'm gonna play with you or what um in you know in the world of monkeys smiling means violence so I just assumed it as such and I just that's when I get rolling but yeah, there has been several people that have seen this. It's not just me. It's not like I'm, you know, schizophrenic and I'm making things up. There's been several witnesses, my partner, my cousin, um, my father, my grandmother knew about it. Um, I think she was the first, to be honest with you. Um, I just, she, I just sent you a photo to your messenger and... If this looks similar, I'll explain a little bit of what it actually is. Because I yeah. know, I know the the term that people use. They don't automatically think this, but this is what they actually are supposed to look like. That's actually almost damn near close. That is a Wendigo. Really? Everyone thinks of a Wendigo with they have the antler heads and everything else, like the deer head. Right. And, 
That's right. not that's not what they really were look like. If you listen to the old Native American lore, they were more or less humans that got really skinny and their mouths were like that because they ate their lips off because they were so hungry. And they became very pale because they're basically like a walking corpse and their hair fell out and everything. So when you started giving me that description, you could see its ribs are so skinny and its mouth being big. Well, its mouth's going to be big because it ate its lips off. That's frightening. You, this is, this is like 98% close. So that's just one depiction. Like if you put in Wendigo, like you're going to see a bunch of antlers and deer skeletons and everything. That's technically, that's more of the, I guess the, when oh, the white settlers, chills. When, <laughs> when the white settlers came around, they, uh, it didn't sound creepy enough. So they kind of bastardized it by putting on a big monster lore about it with a, head of, of antlers course. and everything else but the original native american lore and stories this is what they look like yeah i always i i unfortunately i fell into that group i i thought that the wendigo was the deer skull deer antlers you know just something i always thought it was a person underneath it all but it was like um I don't know. I never really thought about what would be underneath it, but I always assumed there was something underneath it. Like it wasn't just, you know, this magic walking cloak, but this is frightening. Uh, you, this is dangerously close. Um, it has a more, you could see its eyes more than this. Mm -hmm. Um, the eyes are more visible. The mouth is, correct um if you can imagine this photo smiling like a huge smile like when someone says like say cheese you know you do that really big like yeah fake smile imagine that on this yeah. and it's like that almost like that come hither type smile i wonder if this was a one to go i would crap my pants because we lived in far surrounded areas now wouldn't they be around like reserves and though like wouldn't it be around them i'm not real sure how it all works with that i just know that um and i haven't heard any tales of them being towards the south either they usually seem to be up more in the northern areas and but just from your description and everything, that's, that was what I was getting. I was like, it sounds very similar to what a Wendigo looks like. So. Yeah, that is just scary. I'm going to have to show that. I'm going to save it. I'm going to have to show it to my partner and uh, my family. Yeah. Now, I, I always was kind of like everyone else usually is, where they think that the, the antlers and everything else, that's what, when you look up Wendigo, that's everything you find is that you have to look really hard to find the actual right. Yeah. Old, old versions. And I had a guest on from another, he actually hosts another podcast, and he was the one that said he had a run-in with a Wendigo, and his description was similar to what yours was. And that's what got me thinking, because he's the one that even brought it up, that they're, uh, the misconception is the antlers and everything else, but the original Native American lore are they're basically like humans that became cannibals, and they ate their own selves, and it's all sort of wow. place from that. So with the Wendigos looking like that, what about that and the, um, what is the other one? The, um, the Skinwalker. Yes, yes, yes. That's the one. That's a Navajo thing more than anything. A lot of people say Skinwalkers and they, they think of them as like shapeshifters, which again, without being taboo, because I know they, like the Navajos, they're not even supposed to talk about it. And a lot of people label things skinwalkers, but right. I've noticed recently people are getting very upset with podcasters and other people mislabeling things as skinwalkers. But uh, basically what a skinwalker is, is a shaman from like the Navajos. And it's kind of the same thing. They have to kill a family member to be able to take the spirits and shape of these other animals. So they have to kill an animal to be able to take the shape of it. But in order to become an actual skin, well, you have to kill a family member. Wow. That was their lore legend for whatever back 
but again, they won't even talk about it. It's very taboo for them to talk about it. They think it's like a curse thing. You don't want to even mention it. So are they, um, well, are they immortal like the Wendigo or it, I wonder? They're if... more like a, I think they become more spirit type. I don't know if they're flesh and blood at this point. Like once they take that ritual or whatever, I don't know right. how. I don't know if they're alive or dead. I don't know how any of that works. Like I said, I'm not 100% familiar with any of the right, right actual outcomes of how they go about their stuff. I just know that's what the legends right. are based off of. Yeah, no, that, that you're pretty spot on with that. Um, I wonder if this guy that, um, um, the, the guy that, that had the, uh, encounter with his Wendigo, I wonder, um, I didn't, I haven't listened to his account yet. I'm one of, um, is he also, um, was his, is his stuff already, uh, loaded to the podcast? Yeah, he's on, I think it's episode, uh, let me look real quick. I think it's like episode 38 or 37. Okay. It says uh, in the description, I'll have Wendigo in the description. Okay. It, sh it should be episode, scrolling down here. Episode 39 says Michigan Wendigo. Gotcha. Michigan Wendigo. Yeah, I'm going to have to take a, a little gander of that. Um Hopefully, we're not dealing with the same thing um, or, you know, been exposed to the same thing. It would be my luck that I was, you know, dealing with something super, supernatural. Wendigos, though, you always think they're very, um, I think they're always recognized, like, even with skinwalkers, like they're always recognized as evil. So if okay. it hasn't come to you or come towards you or anything else, it, that seems strange because usually with the lore of Wendigos, they're, if you have a run-in with a Wendigo, you usually don't get away from it is what it sounds like. No, it never, it would get close. Well, we also would not let it get close to us. Um, also have to take that in consideration. Like if we... We never actually played in the woods. Woods we would go through, and you know, to get to where we need to go. But we never actually like hung out in woods. Um, but we never like got it like that close to us. There was a couple times where, like, I, like I said, my dad. Um, one of the scariest times was when my father said it got close to the porch, and we're, we gotta go. Mm -hmm. And we left that night with the clothes that we had on our body. And that was like the most scariest um, situation I've ever been in. And, you know, he said that it got close and, you know, he didn't want to know what he didn't want to take a chance on what could happen if it did get closer, you know. So it never got that close to do anything. But now it's never harmed me when I was younger. I would always, you know run away from it or my grandmother you know would have us come in also you know she did do a lot of the old rituals we, you know we also had the the blue root um the blue ceilings we had the caraway seeds on the windows she did all that good stuff um from protection from the haints and the all that good stuff um but do you yeah. think because of your family's history and kind of what you dabbled into that you've become more open and draw things towards yourself just from the things you've kind of done. I think so. And that's, that's originally what I was saying earlier is I think because of me dabbling into things and being so open to things. Um, I mean, and it's not just, you know, dabbling into magic like i i have dreams about things that you know that happen i have um you know premonitions all the time of things and it's like it's one of those weird things where it's like oh i'm you know not a fortune teller and i don't read palms if i you know in my mind's eye if something happens i normally tell the person i don't like to 
my my dad would always used to say, you know, you should never change fate. But I believe that it's being shown to me for a reason. And I, I do agree with that. I think people that see things are meant to see things. I don't think the everyone sees the same things that everyone else sees too. I think everyone has their own interpretations of it, but I think everyone's meant to see what they do encounter. Right. So I'm always the first person to tell someone, you know, whatever the case may be, but <clears throat> I, th I do think so. I think maybe um, I may have pulled it towards me or maybe I got its attention um, from an early age and maybe it sends like, I don't know, energy or, <clears throat> excuse me, or, you know, whatever the case may be. I really don't know. And I also don't know why it wouldn't have attacked me. Maybe it was also afraid. Um, then I don't know. Or maybe it was just curious. I'm not sure. I, I've been down this whole road of like, you know, what if, what if, what if, or why, 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 why? I I literally just a mile long of just like different questions that I've asked myself and my family and, and like nobody knows the answers to any of it. And it's just one of those things where I don't think we'll ever have it. But I'm thankful now that I live in a city and I, and <laughs> you know, there's, there's not a lot of, um, woods around us if i ever see it behind a trash can i'm gonna have to go and go just go ham on it with a machete or something mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> when you get to the point, bigger cities though you don't know if you have to worry about the things out in the woods or the things down in the alleyways these points because you never know what kind of person's out lingering around there too oh trust me no they're out in the streets right outside of my house um just as the 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 crazy people, the drug dealers, all that stuff. If it's right outside, man, I have on my on my actual um, profile. Um, I have videos of this, the, just the nonsense that these people do, and just the I don't know. It's just insane. You got you got to check it out yourself. The stuff that happens down here is just. It's it's chef's kiss. It's it's just <laughs> horrible. <laughs> no, I, I've had to work in some big cities for certain things, and uh, I've been in some sketchy areas, and had to work in a area just outside of Chicago for a while, and yeah, it gets uh gets a little scary every now and then. You never know uh, what's going to go on when you're out trying to do something, and uh, yeah, Chicago itself. I've seen pictures of and it's frightening where it, uh, it, it like, I'm, a, I'm sorry. As I say, I'm a country boy, so I've always lived out in the country. So big cities to me are always scary. <laughs> uh, now I, um, we, like I said, we came up from down there and I, I love the city, I guess, you know, just because of everything that's happened to me in my life. But, you know, even down there we were, where we were, they called it Upper Arkansas. It wasn't, you know, the famous, you know, New Orleans area or, you know, Baton Rouge or anything like that. Where we were, it was, you know, up, Upper North. They they called it Upper Arkansas, but it was still Louisiana. And um, it just wasn't rich with you know K the Cajun Creole people it was kind of like scattered around like salt and pepper but they were, they were still there you know we still were called swamp puppies the kids that are there and believe it or not there's um lots of sightings of Bigfoot down there that's the biggest thing down there the Rugaru yeah I've heard of a lot about the Bigfoot down there and the Rougarou, the potential werewolf dog men, depending on who you talk to. Yep. You know, there's See, all sorts they, of stories from down that way. Yeah, some say it's a dog man type situation. Some people say it's like a Sasquatch that's an alligator. Some say that it's just a regular Sasquatch. There's so many different ones. 
Um, it's just, you never know, um, in this planet. And I, and I try to keep an open mind. I mean, just yesterday I was reading on Google, um, there was six new, um, spiders, brand new, don't have names for them found in, uh, Brazil. Mm -hmm. I saw that too, a couple weeks ago. And then the new crab. Did you see the new crab that they found? No, I didn't see the crab. Yeah, it was this huge, huge crab that had uh, spikes like all over it. If you, if I guess when it's in water, it would kind of portray like um, almost like um, I guess you'd say like coral or something. It was just enormous. Um, I guess you can Google like. Brazilian spike crab or something like that and it'll pop up it's just it's crazy big it showed it walking down like a cliff side and it's like part of me was like that's frightening and then the other part of me because I've been in Maryland so long it's like I want to eat that <laughs> <laughs> I've always I've always wanted to try the crab and everything else and I have and I I don't know what it is like it when it comes to seafood it's just not I can't do it like lobster smelled great tasted it it was gummy to me and I I, I can't do gummy I have like a gag reflex to gummy stuff so I couldn't do it's it tell my partner is he's not a big uh, fan of seafood whatsoever and he tells people <clears throat> that he's allergic to crab because you know you get you get a stink eye in Maryland if you tell people you don't like crab. They're like, "What's wrong with you?" So in order to avoid all that, he just tells them that you know he's allergic to seafood. But it's the same thing; it's a texture thing, and mm -hmm. he just yep. he just not a fan of it. I can't do Jello. I can't do gummy worms or anything like that. So my daughter will try and hand me some gummy worms or a gummy bear. I'm like, I can't do that, baby. <laughs> Daddy'll throw up. <laughs> so. Yeah. No, I love it all, man. I uh, I was just just the way I was raised. The only thing I won't eat is the more crazier stuff that my dad has tried to get me to eat in the past. I mean, my dad has tried to get me to eat like snapping turtle and. I mean, anything that moves, my father has tried to put it on a plate, and I just, I can't deal with it. You ever seen uh, the water boy where his mom had the thing out, the... The, the snakes or whatever it was that they were cooking? Yeah, yeah. They were, she was asking, um, what's what's for dinner? And it was like something else got zapped outside by the bugs, <laughs> and it was like, squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's my dad. <laughs> I, said, I think it, the most exotic thing I've probably ever had was I tried some ostrich and I honestly don't even remember what it tasted like I'm assuming it probably tasted like chicken because yeah it's a it's a bird so I think they kind of all taste similar yeah yeah I've had their eggs um uh, the eggs are just delicious um when you put it in like um cakes and stuff I um I decorate cakes for a living um well i wouldn't say for a living but I, I do it in my downtime i love to decorate i love to bake and stuff like that you know pastries and and whatnot and i've used it in a couple different things and it is just amazing um ostrich but it costs it's like 50 dollars an egg depending between 50 and 75 emu eggs are really good too interesting enough the guy that uh we bought this house from they'd lived here for 20 something years and at one point our neighbor said he had ostriches or emus she wasn't sure what they were so they're just really big birds so <laughs> i guess where i live at now at one point they had these uh big birds running around out here but not but today we just have some chickens and a duck <laughs> and hopefully that's the way it'll stay no uh no bigfoots no no uh none of the monstrosity that you sent me um yeah i cannot wait to show my partner this photo i really can't that uh, hopefully that, that uh helps bring some uh 
a little bit of answers of maybe what it was, but again, like I said, that was just when you're describing it, that's the first thing that popped in my head is it sounds like a Wendigo. It's frightening. It really is frightening. And I just, I wish I knew why. And you know, we've tried everything too. We've tried, um, you know, we blessed our home, you know, my grandmother would do the whole broom and, and the sage and she did it all. I mean, we've done it all here. And like, and now the place that I'm living now, I have like a little apartment and, um, this is just a little one bedroom apartment, like, you know, kind of tucked away in, in Baltimore. And, um, there's just, there's no, no trees. And I just, I feel super safe. The only thing is that's messing with me now is, um, my partner said that I've been talking in my sleep and I've been saying a bunch of nonsense. So I, um, I have actually started as of last night to record what I'm saying. So I guess if it gets crazy, I'll, I'll be sending you a, a copy. Maybe you can just see what's going on with it. No, definitely. If you ever catch anything, send it my way. Love to see it. Absolutely. Well, Josh, I think we can wrap this up unless there's anything else you want to talk about. Uh, no, I think it's good. Um, I, I think I got everything that I, I, I've had to what you know about I, yeah i think that's about it um it was really nice meeting you and um i don't know if i can talk to my cousins or anything um see if they have any stories if i can get anything from them I, i'll be more than willing to shoot you a message on facebook let you know about what's going on with that yeah love to hear about it i appreciate you coming on here and talking to me today it's uh been my pleasure it's been mine as well, sir. It's good, nice meeting you. You too. You have a good day. You too now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Remember, the truth lies in the stories we share, the connections we make. Stay curious, stay open-minded. Thank you all for joining us on this journey, and until next time, keep questioning, keep seeking, and keep exploring the unknown. Good night, everyone.